Hey guys, it's Joey up here. I just want to take a moment to do a walkthrough with you on all the modules in the Feng Shui Academy Classic Training. Now, firstly, the Feng Shui Academy Classic Training is our flagship program uh, in all our Feng Shui training in the Joey Up Academy. So this is where all the beginners start their journey. And uh, a lot of our students have since become practitioners. Some have become masters on their own, having their own school. They all begin their journey through the Feng Shui Academy Classic Training. And this program was first created in um, 2014, if I'm not mistaken. And even so, at that time, it's gone through many incarnations and improvements as a result of feedback and uh, many different uh, um, updates that we have. Okay, so Feng Shui Academy um, Classic is the the place to begin if you are an absolute beginner in 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 Feng Shui. Even if you are a practitioner who who done some training from different schools, this will be a good alignment for you to get back on track to becoming a professional practitioner in Feng Shui. Now, it, maybe you don't want to become a practitioner in Feng Shui. Maybe you just want to use this for yourself, for your business, for your home, and for improving certain aspects of your life. This will be the perfect place to begin. Now, I want to take you through the, the tracks. The tracks um, each module have uh, and um, what it entails and what it includes. So it starts with the first um, topic, which is get set ready feng shui. So this is where um, I will be explaining the origins as well as the right mindset and the right approach in studying feng shui. You see, a lot of times people have the wrong perception when they study feng shui. So they expect that if I just do this, then my life will just change overnight. They, and they don't understand you know, that um, there are certain benefits of doing feng shui, but there are also certain um, things or restrictions if you or constraints if you don't have that right approach then feng shui simply does not work and feng shui becomes meaningless so i will explain to you here the correct and solid foundation where um and and the right me methodologies that, that 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 you should adopt in learning and applying feng shui in your life and also i'll be explaining the various difference of systems that are applied in in feng shui and um, the Eastern version or regional versions. And then, of course, I also have to explain to you what are the, well, non-authentic systems. So you understand that some are just superstition and then what are true authentic principles of feng shui. Now, when I say authentic, it has to be related, obviously, to um, classical literatures that is actually passed down from the ancestors or the, the four founding fathers of feng shui, not something that we just invent, you know, out of thin air. There are certain classical literatures. A lot of people don't know that when you learn something like Flying Stars or we learn something like Shuan Kong Dagua or, or Eight Mansions, it actually comes from certain literature that, that you can actually have a look at it. And these are the original authors and, and creators of the system. Whereas the new new version of it is like basically hang a wind chime here and put a, a toad on this corner. That has got no reference in historical history of, of feng shui. That's basically invented by by people, okay, by Chinese decorative artists who likes to do paintings and decorate their house. So they think they say this is symbolically interesting. Uh, it's symbolically good. So you just have this in the house and it'll be good. That's not feng shui. That's not classical feng shui. At least they just, you know, if you're selling painting, obviously you might want to give a beautiful meaning, but it has got zero re relations to actual energies. That's why the first topic is to set you on the right direction, and the second topic, a song of wind and water is to talk about the concept of the invisible forces, qi, qi flow. How, how does the two traditional approach to qi flow um, view the flow of energy into our property or how is qi harnessed? How do you actually collect the qi? How do you divert the qi? This is so important because this is the foundation of all feng shui systems. Whether you practice flying stars or landform, it is always about understanding the flow of qi in your property. So if your feng shui, if your home doesn't receive qi flow, it's not connected to feng shui. That means it's like a house without Wi-Fi. You can't get online, right? So this part here gives you the right concept, the right 
perspective so that you can actually apply this in your home without making mistakes. This is very, very important. And then because of understanding these two topics, you also know how to mitigate negative chi. Because a lot of people feel that, oh, you know, I'm in a negative room, what should I do? Well, if the chi is not in the room, not collected in the room, there's no negative chi per se, it's just calculations. So if you understand how chi flows, and the fundamentally, then you know how to also mitigate the chi. And then the next topic brings you further into the power of the eight. This is where the, the eight quad, eight sectors, because each sector has a attribute, has a type of energy, and it governs certain aspects. It can govern um, certain behavior, um, m emotions. It can govern certain aspects of health or certain organs or body parts or family members. So the eight sectors are the eight original uh, uh, houses where the, the, the eight stars come from, where the life gua comes from, and where the source of energy is for the, uh, the feng shui setup. One of these sectors will affect one aspect of your life. So there are eight types of energies. How do you actually see these energies and how do you actually uh, uh, see them on, on, a, on a plan and, and, and use them appropriately? Okay, because at the end of the day, good feng shui means this particular sector receives good energy. Okay, and then the next part, obviously, the logical um, uh, progression is to learn how to map the chi flow. So mapping the chi flow has, has got certain ways. There are flying star techniques. There are eight mentions techniques. There are different schools that tell you how to map the chi flow. This is that means to calculate the charts. Okay, so once you get the right chart over the house, now you understand. Okay, which section has what type of energy and now you will begin to understand how to use the space so this is the part where you know because you can't see the invisible through the naked eye but through a energy map once you plot the chart now you can decide what you want to do with the feng shui um, topic five is about eat sleep feng shui is about you know how do you circulate the chi in your bedrooms for example how do you use this to rejuvenate your health how do you get vibrant energy? How do you get inspiration? Because it's important. Now, sleep is important because you rejuvenate. You might get some ideas in your dreams and you feel better. You feel good. If you have good sleep and you process your, your, your digest your food in a good way, you become healthy. So part of feng shui, we begin by understanding that health is the most important wealth. We start with this. And then we understand the power of the nine stars. Each of these stars, they, they are they are 20 year stars, they are yearly stars, what each one means and how they influence the energies in that particular sector and how you could use those sectors to your benefit. Sometimes you want to enhance the star, sometimes you want to weaken a certain star, sometimes you want to attract a certain star. You got to first understand what these stars mean, right? Now, when the stars meet, they combine, sometimes they collide. These are the 81 combinations in flying stars. And if you just read the old books on the classics, some of these are outdated, right? They say, for example, 9-6 means you vomit blood. I mean, how many people go out and vomit blood, right? In those days, they might have tuberculosis. That's why they vomit blood. But today, it could mean something else. It can mean that um, some people are there that, you know, there's disagreement, and it's almost like you're vomiting blood trying to talk to and convince to people who are extremely stubborn. But more importantly, how do you overcome that, right? So the 81 combinations is, you got to see this in a, 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 a more contemporary view. So there's a classical view, and then there's the contemporary view, and this is what I will be talking about on topic seven. And then topic eight, it's the, it's the start of the deep dive session. So we're going to deep dive into wealth, business, and career. A lot of people learn feng shui for the purpose of en enhancing their business opportunities, improving their career. How do you um, unblock the wealth chi? For example, a lot of people, not that they are not hardworking, capable, it's just that a lot of their progression is blocked. So how do you unblock that, right? How do you improve the recognition and progression in a crowded space? How do you eliminate backstabbing and politics in, in your in your work? So we want to learn feng shui that is practical in your daily practice. And the next topic, topic nine, we do a deep dive into relationships, family and friends. So um, you see, in the feng shui academy, I don't just restrict it to flying star method. I'm going to include sun her methods like the peach blossom, for example. Um, or certain star combinations that actually improve likability and attractiveness. Just come on, right? I think period nine, 
is a period where is a time where attention is the currency of the world. And the more positive attention you can garner, the more successful you would be. And so you want to learn how feng shui can do that for you. So it's not just peach blossom for love, but even for love, you need to have, at least have the first step of being able to attract the attention of someone that you admire, right? So that's what we're going to be talking about in that topic. And also, if you can command positive attention, you will have better family relationships, better relationship with people in general, okay? And of course, a deep dive into health and well-being. This is where, you know, we, we we're talking about the positioning of your house for the optimal vibrational, uh, vibrant health um, and how you could reset your health and energy input imprint in case, um, you know, something's not working so right in your current uh, house right now. And how do you deal with chronic illnesses using feng shui? A lot of people just talk about star two being the, the illness star, but what do you put for the other the eight stars, right? How do you actually deal with, with, with feng shui for, for chronic illness? Well, we're going to talk about that in, in topic 10. And topic 11, deep dive into academic pursuits. You see, everything that we ever want in life, in, in our career, in our world, in our relationship, in our health, we can learn to do it. We can learn to get it, including building a wealth, including building a, a, a strong business. So how do we look at the intelligent star, not just doing well in studies, but becoming a winner in life. How do we help our kids excel in their studies? How to get good grades this year, right? I mean, for some people, you, you need to help them study. So what sort of feng shui do you use? That's the point. So, and um, uh, topic 12, I want to focus on timing your feng shui. There's such a thing called afflictions. There's uh, renovation dates that you need to know, the great sun formula. I mean, there's such a thing called afflictions like the, the five yellow or the the grand deal or the tree killings. And if you activate them, you're going to have a whole year of problems. So how do you mitigate them? How do you select timing for this? Well, that's topic 12. And finally, let's go through a walkthrough. How do you do audits? How do you actually feng shui audit a house? Now that you've learned all this technique, putting it together would be the key, isn't it? Right? So how do you actually put it together and, and, and go step by step into understanding how the feng shui is actually applied. That part is an important aspect of this training. Okay, so these are the 13 modules in the Feng Shui Academy classics. And uh, wherever you are in your journey in Feng Shui, if you've been reading a lot of books about Feng Shui, or if you have been DIY for a long time, or if you've attended some seminars here and there, but you want to have a proper path, a proper study path to acquiring and learning Feng Shui, then this is your journey. Okay. So uh, this year we have the Feng Shui Academy membership for the first time. And if you are joining us this year, you become a pioneer member. So you will receive the Feng Shui Academy classics training, which is these 13 modules right here, as well as have the have access to the 12 month members only premium content, as well as access to the Feng Shui Explorer 3.0. That is where you get to use the software and save a lot of time instead of trying to plot things by hand. So this will be a great year if you've not already done so to join the Feng Shui Academy because from now moving onwards in future, it's going to be the Feng Shui Academy membership instead of just the Feng Shui Academy classics. If you join just this program on a la carte basis, anytime other than the the enrollment period, it will be $1,997 and only for these 13 modules. But if you're joining in now, you will get not just the Feng Shui Academy classic modules that you can access for a lifetime. And as long as you're in the membership, in the membership, you will continue to receive on a monthly basis, the premium members only content where there will be discussions on latest topics or examples or case studies or Q&As or very interesting uh, anchor training. And of course, you get access to, as long as you remember, the Feng Shui Explorer, which is super useful. Even if you're not a full-time practitioner, that saves you a lot of time in plotting charts and reading the energy map of your home. Okay, so click on the link that you see that comes with this video or in this email or in this channel right now and go to the site and register for the Feng Shui Academy membership. And I will see you inside the membership area. Thank you so much.